we are going to talk about short rows. Now there are two parts of making a short row that tends to cause knitters a great deal of anguish. The first is in instructions you're going to see turn your work. Okay, please think back to when you were first learning how to knit and you didn't know how to pick up your knitting and you inevitably, at least once, knit in the wrong direction. And that is why when a knitter reads turn your work, they freak out. Because if you're turning your work in the middle of your knitting, as you will be with short rows, you're thinking hole, hole, really, really big hole, right in the middle of your knitting. You see, I've made this lovely little sampler this is what happens when you just knit along to a certain place and decide to go the other direction, which again is inevitably something every single new knitter does. Okay? The other phrase that tends to make knitters just a tad nervous or confused is wrap your stitch. Okay, wrap your stitch. What do you mean wrap your stitch? What in the world does that mean? And the thing is, even if your instructions tell you how to wrap a stitch, there's a little clue in there that is rarely mentioned that makes the whole thing work. Now, let me just quickly show you the difference between a beginning beginner's error. Okay, look at here, even when I stretch it, you can really see the holes. And what is actually a design element. When you do short rows, you end up with extra fabric like you want for a variety of reasons, and we're going to talk about that later. But you end up with extra fabric, but it doesn't leave holes. Okay? And that's what we're looking for. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it like this. I have already done a little sampler here to start showing you. Short rows happen right in the middle of a piece of knitting. I'm going to show you the mechanics first, and then I'm going to show you the reasons why you have short rows later. The mechanics. Now in my little sample that I made for you, both with holes and appropriately short rowed without holes, I knit up two. Four stitches close to the end. Let's assume my instructions said to do that. And it's going to say wrap and turn at the very minimum. Now what you want to do to wrap a stitch you're knitting, you want to bring the yarn to the opposite direction of where it normally wants to be. So in knitting, it's in the back in this case. So what you'll do is you're going to bring your yarn to the front. You're going to slip the next stitch to the needle. You're going to take the yarn back to the back, turn, and you're going to slip the stitch back. Now look what you have done. By slipping the stitch and moving the yarn around, you have wrapped the stitch. That's what they mean by wrap and turn. Here's something that I rarely see in any instructions, and that is when you start to go the other direction, okay, you've got this wrapped stitch. You don't know what to do with that wrapped stitch, and what you are likely to do is take it, pull it like it was a regular stitch, and purl the next stitch, and then head on down. No. What I want you to do is be sure that you keep that wrap stitch loose. When you go into purl, I want you to make sure that wrap stitch stays nice and loose. Okay? And then you're going to knit down, in this case for the example, to the four stitches before the change, and I'm going to turn the work and come back. Okay, be right back. Now I have purled back to four stitches before the end. Now remember, if I'm purling, my yarn's in the front. So in this case, when I need to do a wrap and turn, I'm going to move the yarn to the back of my knitting. I'm going to slip the stitch. I'm going to turn my work. I'm going to move the yarn back to the back so I can start knitting and I'm going to slip that stitch back. Now here again, there's maybe a temptation or you just don't know any better. If you 
go to start knitting and pull that stitch like you were normally knitting, you're going to strangle the base of this wrap stitch and you don't want that. So keep it nice and loose, knit, okay? Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you how you pick up the wrap stitch with its knit stitch and that's how you achieve that nice seamless no hole segment of your short row. So I am knitting along and it's very easy to see where your wrap stitch is. You can see where there's a wrap around the base of this stitch and this stitch just looks like normal. Okay, so that means I have one more stitch to knit and then I get to my wrap stitch and what you do is you slip the stitch over here and you make it so that you are wrap you're knitting those two stitches together okay so you had to slip the stitch over pull the wrap stitch up next to it knit it together and then you knit on down to the end of the row okay I am going to purl back and I'll show you how to pick up a purled stitch that's been wrapped Okay, so I've purled back, and again, it's just as easy to see a wrapped purl stitch as it is to see a wrapped knit stitch. See, here you can see at the base of this purl stitch, there's a wrap around it. And at the base of this purl stitch, it looks just like a purl stitch. So I want to purl that stitch. Now you can begin to see why you needed to keep that wrap loose, because it has to actually be basically a stitch worth of yarn because you are going to knit or purl it. So what I do is I slip my little purl over and I slip that little wrap onto the needle, okay, and essentially, and you can decide how you want to do it. Sometimes maybe you want to fiddle around and move them back and forth or whatever. Essentially the point is that you are purling these two stitches together, okay, and then you purl on to the other side and you will end up knitting back nice and normal, but you will have made an extra little bit, an extra row of knitting, two extra rows actually, because you've knit and you've purled between here. See, so you've added extra height. So you can even see how it's already starting to kind of shape that by actually, act, <laughs> sorry, adding extra fabric. Okay, so why in the world would you want to make short rows, right? Let's talk about that. 